Hey Whiskey fam, welcome back. It's been a couple of days. I wanted to kind of play a little more, figure things out, and this time we're gonna focus on progression, specifically hero progression, because this is a gotcha game. So all that really matters at the end of the day are heroes, right? So if we can't get the heroes to be OP, we're pretty much not gonna get anywhere, whether it be PVP, PVE, or doing anything. We might as well just kill ourselves. And so what that means is, we want to know what is the best way to do it. So, number one, if you're going to start the game, what I found myself is that you really want to focus initially on doing certain things. One is guide missions. Guide missions are here, and they literally tell you exactly what to do. So, my suggestion for everyone is, as you're going through the game, make sure you collect all the rewards because they're hefty. You're getting 50 gems or 10 gems or 100 gems, depending on the stage that you're at. I can tell you that just from these guide missions that I've definitely done on at least two or three pulls, easy, minimum, I don't even remember, but that has helped me a great deal. Now, if you look at my hero list, at this point, I'm completely free to play, yet I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, whoops, seven SSRs, right? So I have seven rares or legendary level characters and my ash is actually a dupe mainly because you get a free ash dupe uh, as you progress through the campaign but this is all free i haven't paid a dime yet i haven't had to and obviously i've had above average luck to be fair but it is what it is so do your guide missions because they're great they're going to give you a lot of resources that you need um, things like gems to get the heroes, gold to afford the heroes and all the upgrades because yes, you're going to be bleeding gold. Initially, you're not going to feel it, but after like the first, I would say, day and a half of playing, that's when you start realizing, oh shit, the gold is disappearing. What is going on? Where did it go? Uh, and the reason why is because you have so many things to do. You have weapon level upgrades. You have um, level upgrades itself for the hero. Then you have skill upgrades. And then you have um, limit break upgrades. You have literally a million different upgrades to do. So it is going to be very expensive gold-wise. And as you go on from the guide missions, the next thing to focus on is the campaigns. Now, there's only three real sections here. And... A trick that I have learned, I think, to make my life a lot easier is that you can reach them all here. So if you're ever, let's say, in Heroes, and you want to just have a shortcut instead of going, have it going to back to the main screen, just click your side button, click Special, Challengers, or Campaign. Those are really the main sections you're going to go to. Um, as you get deeper in the game, obviously, you're going to be able to do crafting, um, treks, which are side special missions that you can just load up units to get free XP, as well as some units. Um or even uh, just uh, materials that you're going to need to upgrade your hero. So do treks. I learned about this really late, and I feel pretty dumb about it, honestly. I wish I learned about it earlier. Uh, but, you know, you learn from my mistakes. I suffer so that hopefully you don't have to. As a community, you know, you, you don't want to be that guy who stumbles, right? You're, so I'm hoping that as I stumble through my game and I make all these stupid mistakes that you don't repeat mine. So that's why we're sharing this stuff. Uh, and definitely, I've learned a lot. You know, I want to give a shout out real quick, actually, to like Creamy uh, and to a whole bunch of other guys in the Discord server who have been, you know, really on the game and just pounding it out. You know, Chow, all these other dudes. Uh, they've just been a great resource to me as well because they're progressing much further. Um, I, I do get frustrated sometimes, not because of the game. Uh, I always say this. This is my go-to line. The game is fun. The game is great. The developer has issues with their policies um but we shouldn't let that affect how we feel about the game uh hopefully at some point they're gonna do better with communication and uh, that will improve the game honestly but that being said focusing in on campaign going back so campaign is where you start and in order to go through the campaign you want to make sure you maximize your resources and your rewards because you want to get full 30 stars in every stage. As you get 30 stars, you're going to get more gems. So in my experience, every two to four stages, you're going to get enough gems for a 10 pull. So do it. It's great. Um, it's not hard either. So the first, I would say, uh, chapters from one to five are cakewalk. And you're not going to really have to worry about anything. Just put, you know, whatever good units you have and work on it. 
Now, after five, that's when you're going to hit your first wall, probably. And here, you're going to have to start learning how to improve your heroes. So how do you do that? One is, obviously, as you beat each level and each stage, they're actually going to give you resources. They're going to give you fodder. So what would you mean by fodder? Fodder are basically crap units. At least I treat them like crap units. Anything R or N, to me, is a crap unit. And I use them to just literally level up all my other units uh, based on whatever affinity they have. I will try my best to save the fire to upgrade the fire because they get boosted EXP from it. But sometimes I'm just like, screw it. I don't have time to deal with this. Let's just get it done. I'll put it all into one character regardless of what element they are. These orbs, amazing. I wish I had infinite numbers of them. They give you a crap ton of EXP. So make sure you use them. And I do not waste this fodder. So I will not use fire on something else that's not fire. That's just me though. So that is that. As you go through the content and you need to upgrade, there's different types of upgrades you can do. So let's go to heroes because again, this is your bread and butter. So let's look at Ash because everybody's going to have Ash. Now, what kind of upgrades can you do? So there are mainly a few. One is grade, right? But before we get to grade, actually, let me talk about level. Fortify you for it is increasing your level. Now, as you look at these blank little diamonds or triangles, whatever you want to call them, that shows you how many dupes you've put into it. Each one increases your level by five. So this guy can increase his level by another five, 25, right? Because there's five dupes that you can put into him. Now keep in mind of this, and this is going to be very important as you start talking about higher level um, progression and as you get to mid to late game in this. So this is an SSR. This is effectively uh, almost the highest and most rarest unit you're going to get. So what happens in that situation? You're probably going to get screwed with very, very few duplicates, right? Um, unless there's a way to farm it. Thankfully, Ash as well as Sophia are farmable SSRs, which is very important. So that means that Ash and Sophia are going to be units that you can guarantee, given enough time, to max out their levels. So that means you're going to get all five diamonds lighted up. So what that means is you can go to Fortify, which I can't anymore because I'm actually at the limit until I get another dupe. You can go in there, put some slimes, well, that's what I call them, fodder or slimes, and increase their level. Now, the other one is grade. So right now he's grade B. By clicking on grade, this is an important factor, which I realized a little bit late. Now, initially, you're only going to have to use Fire Elixir to upgrade your unit from different levels starting at D. Every time you upgrade them, they're getting huge bonuses in their EHP, their physical attack, defense, and sometimes maybe speed, but most times not. And as you become later in the progression, you're going to have to use Rainbow Elixir as well, which is much rarer. Um, it's not that hard. Again, as long as you do the content, you grind it. This is not considered super rare resources. It's just not as common. But again, gold, it does add up. So I'm going to warn you again, you know, just be careful how you spend your gold. Um, it shouldn't be too much of a problem as long as you're playing the game, but it can be. So that is number two. First is level upgrades, great upgrades, which increases your base stats or combat ability. Then it is raise level cap. What is raise level cap? This is when you have a dupe. If you have a dupe, you click on this and immediately you're going to see another ash be selected and you can increase the dupe to plus two and this limit breaks means that you are now plus two and now you can go to 50 as you can see here and max skill level means that you can increase your skill level so as you limit break that also means that your skills here can be increased right now i'm limited to level two because i've only had one dupe if i had four i could probably go to level four and that's why there's five here one for each duplicate now obviously the most powerful version of your skills is going to be here but i will tell you this these are really expensive if you just check this out right here this takes high grade skill stones what does that mean that means that i can only get it by retiring aka selling legendary or better heroes that's insane so that means that not only do i need to get dupes of ash i then need to get legend or super rare level fire units to sell so that I can actually then upgrade my unit skill and I take six so keep in mind this is the grind 
in late stages in many of these games. In this one, Brown Dust, Epic Seven, all of them are the same. There's always going to be the skills or something along that's going to be the ultimate grind. And at this point, from what I understand, this is the ultimate grind outside the dupes, obviously. So, you know, be ready for that. It's going to suck. Let's be honest about it. You know, you got two major skills and it's going to hurt. It's going to really hurt. Take a lot of time. So be ready to be stuck in level one for quite a minute. Okay. So one level, two grade, three limit breaks, four is your skills. And lastly is your abilities. So your abilities uses an entirely different resource. This uses elixir, right? Um, I call it elixir because I don't know what else to call it. So at the beginning, if you look here, it only costs 10 elixir. So let's approve. Cool. I got plus five attack. I'm very happy. I'll go to my next button. Now it's getting a little expensive. Now it's doubled to 20. Okay. Let's do it again. Okay. Now this is 30. So it's very, very progressive. So you can imagine as you progress, each time you do this, it is going to be extremely expensive. And then you're also going to need more materials. So... Those are the ways that you progress your character through the game. There are five types of progressions and all of them matter. Now, outside of hero progression, there is also equipment progression or gear. Now, if you look here, you have a sword and then you have different types of weapons like a four star. And then you have the fodder, which always looks like this, right? These are two star, three star, four star fodders. In my experience, I found I had a real hard time upgrading them. Um, as you progress though, let's say for example, you have, uh, let me pick an item. Let's pick this sword, right? If you want to raise the level cap, they treat your weapon just like a hero. So in order for me to do that, I have to pay gold and start raising my level cap. So boom, there you go. My weapon is now raised by one entire tier. And so that means that I can go from 40 to 45. And it's the same thing for all the gear. You can always raise the level cap and fortify them as well. So basically the way to think about it is there's two types of heroes. There's a the gear, which is one type of hero. And there's your actual mercenary hero. And both of which are very important because oftentimes you're going to find out that it's a lot easier in at least from my experience so far to a grind for gear up to like four stars or later on five stars uh, than it is to actually get the units you're going to need for the hero itself. So don't sleep on the gear. It's important. Um, also, don't be like me when you're desperate and you have no accessories per se. Uh, for example, I think I did it to this guy. I think I did because I'm so desperate. Yes. So don't do this. I was desperate. I just wanted to give him something. I foddered a bunch of other fodders into this fodder just so that he could have some kind of equipment um, because I was lazy and I use all my other pieces already. Don't do that. I mean, it's sad. Uh, do the smart thing. Go and grind for gear. So you understand character progression. How do you grind for gear? There are two special sections. There's a special and there's challenges. Now, if you go to challenges, there's PVP and exploration. Exploration helps you get skills, right? So as you're trying to upgrade your skills, you go to exploration and you can get those stones that you need. Um, the higher the level, the better the skills, obviously. So um, you want to do these progressions. And exploration is rough sometimes because it's basically a marathon and your units start fresh. But as you progress, right, they don't stop. Your units never heal. They just keep going until you complete the progression. So keep that in mind. PVP, I'm going to come back to a little bit later because that is the ultimate end game for any of these gotcha games. And now I'm going to focus on special, which can be clicking special or click special. Here, dimension gate is very important. And that's the one I'm going to probably stress the most. As you can see here, Ash, Sophia. So if you click here, you can select different levels. You can have normal, elite, expert. Obviously, the rewards progressively increase. And what do you get? Well, I don't really care about anything except for this. Soul stones. If you get enough soul stones, which I believe is 50, you can then create a duplicate of Sophia. And this is how you limit break your unit, specifically these SSRs and legendary heroes. All right. So 
this is Ash, this is Sophia. You know that you're guaranteed to get them to max level. So it's important to keep that in mind. You're probably going to be using these units for a while. As you're just starting the game, what I did is I always focused on my SSRs. Um, I kind of regret it now, I won't lie. You don't do this three times a day, by the way. And here's why. It's because, like, when you focus on only SSRs, in PvP, if you're fighting with level 40 versus level, let's say, 70, who's going to win? Obviously, level 70. Even if you're using SSR, if someone else is using a much higher level unit, even though it is not quote-unquote legendary, he's still so much higher in level than you, so his base stats and everything else is going to be better than yours. So as you're starting off, I still recommend focusing on SSRs, right? Especially Sophia and Ash because you can farm them. The others are Ren, Arya, and Malpian. I'm not a huge fan of the others, but they're usable, don't get me wrong. Uh, I like to focus on Ash and Sophia personally. Now, that is how you get the dupes that are farmable for SSR. Keep in mind, you can also farm for other SSR units in hard campaign mode. You can go and get those units when you finally beat the entirety of campaign. So when you go from campaign one all the way through in normal mode to 15 and defeat all the bosses, you can then unlock the hard mode and start obtaining different soul stones. Now, as you go through them, they will tell you exactly what the rewards are. If you open it up and it's in hard, I'm not there yet personally. If you look at 3 slash 10, they'll always tell you all the awards. And that means that you'll start seeing soul stones. So you'll know. I believe the ones that you can get are Malpian um, and a few others. I can't remember off the top of my head. My apologies. Uh, oh, I'm going to talk about Trex real quick. Because again, I was sleeping on this and it hurt. So you can get Elixir, EXP, and uh, different types of creatures or fodder, in my opinion. So make sure you use it. It could be as fast as five minutes. It could be as long as a four hours or six hours or 10 hours. Um, as you select a Trek preparation, it's going to tell you, okay, you need at least five at level 30 or above fire type units. And you just load them up if you can. If you can't, find something else that you can. Okay. Highly recommended. You can use four different... Uh, uh, teams at a time as long as you have those units available now if you want to get gear you go to special and you go to raids raids is where you get all your gears so depending on which one you go you'll get different gear I'm assuming I still haven't figured out what is what I'm not even gonna lie to you and pretend like I do know I don't I apologize but I do can tell you that this is where you get your gear so whatever you select they are element based so try to be smart and pick the right element obviously the higher the tier the better the rewards and the better you score and rank the better rewards you're going to get so keep that in mind as well um, there's a limit on a number of premium rewards per run so obviously the higher their score the better your lucky is going to be in getting those premium rewards this is where you get four three five star gear and as well as their fodder units so raids is where you get your gear Terra Shift. Terra Shift is where you get more materials, uh, a few kind of weapons, and gold. And I would just do them. They're very easy. It's not a big deal. So just take care of it. It's a daily thing. It's part of the progression. Now, the thing I'm going to come to now is the PvP factor. So let's go over the PvP. My personal favorite strategy is the double healer cancer method. Right, so you have Sophia, and if you have Helena on this account, I do not have it. But imagine I did have a secondary healer, which you can also use other lesser units that do heal as well. Uh, so what happens if you double heal? If you draw in PvP, you still win. So having double healer means that you are literally cancer, and you're a horrible human being, but it feels so good. So that works until you hit a certain ELO, or level, or rank. Once you hit a certain point in the game, you are now trash. And they re now you have to learn how to play the game in earnest. So, remember I told you, you have SSRs here. And he's already max level 45, correct? Now, then I have Cicero. Cicero is an extremely easy unit to get initially. Because you start with one free, and you get a bunch later. Look at his max level. 
It is 60. I have duped him four times. He is one away and one shy from just getting max. I can literally grade him much faster and much higher because he is a lesser unit. But once he is level 60, he is going to be likely stronger than the other units that I have that are SSR. Now his skills may not be on the exact same par level, but he's still an excellent unit in a P2P situation. So outside of Cicero, which is very commonly used because he can be ranked up to the max very quickly, is Proxy. Proxy is another SR unit that has a specific skill. And what would you think his skill is? His skill is anti-healing. So that literally takes my Cancer's ass, who loves the double healer Cancer Strat, and screws me over because now I get zero healing. He rolls over me with AoE because in this game, like I told you, whether it be PvP or PvE, AoE is king. That's why I think that Esta is an excellent unit because Esta, both her skills are AoE. Enemy times three, enemy times three. Why is Angelo considered the best uh, AoE unit? It is because Angelo is a times four and at times four skills. But that means both his skill sets hits four units instead of three. So that's why he melts units all day. Now, that being said, I do like Yuna. Yuna has a times three skill as well as a times four skill. She has a nice blend. Why? Even though she's only got one times four skill, her normal attack hits three units. And to me, that is a big difference. As I'm going through PvP, as I'm going through PvE, having the ability just to have a consistent source of multi-hit damage is worth something. I will mention, though, that obviously her skill is significantly better if you synergize with her by having chill or freeze effects, correct? So, as you start the game, double cancer heal feels amazing. It is the most broken, cheese-heavy thing that I can think of, and it was amazing. I loved it. Unfortunately, now we're at the point where that no longer works, and I will show you how I get stomped in PvP, I'm assuming. So, let's try it out. Arena, get wrecked, and you get the reason why you do arena is because one, it's fun. Actually, I actually really most of the time the PvP is something that I don't really particularly enjoy, I, but I have to do in order to progress, and it really is the end game of most of these things. But I have to tell you, the PvP experience in this game is quite good. Um, even when you lose, it doesn't feel as bad for some reason to myself. Uh, but like I said, let's keep it going. Uh, I'll just use this unit combination. Me personally, I'll tell you that the combination I typically like to use is one front tank, one mid tank, and two back DPS with one healer or two healers. Uh, obviously, until you hit a certain yellow and you need to use proxy to counter their proxy uh, or their heals. So let's start. My suggestion as you're doing PvP is that I like to start with a AoE immediately. Once I hit that AOE, my second hit is always going to be a proc for heal. And the reason why is because once I do my AOE, oh, look at this guy. He's going to wreck me. So as you can see, I just get wrecked. 4K versus 1.6. He's got a pretty good tank. It is also not a SSR unit. Notice it is a SR unit. And the reason why he's doing it is because it's incredibly easy to rank it up. As why... He is 4.5k to my 1.6k. AoE wrecks me with Esta. Or so that's Hein. I want to use heal. Can't even do it. I'm just going to get wrecked now. And it's time to go night night. Boom. I am dead. See? He's actually using predominantly all SR units. Uh, I think that is unknown. And that is Hein. So he's using very limited numbers of actual units that are not SSR. And it's the right thing to do. So don't sleep on SRs. Make sure you take a look at which ones give you the most value. Uh, get one that's a tank and get one that is proxy or something similar so that you can cheese other people too. And once they get to your level, you're going to wreck them. All right. So that's where we're at right now for progression. And uh, I think it's pretty much it. Last thing I want to add is definitely join a guild. 
uh, guilds give you a lot of different resources. Uh, and also, in the beginning, you're probably going to wonder, if you're dumb like me, then uh, what is this? This is your stamina. And at first, you never run out of stamina or AP. And what you do is, once you are stuck at, let's say, stage 5, right? I'm like, why can't I get stronger? Well, what you probably should do is walk away and just let it AFK farm. So go to stage 410 or whatever stage you feel comfortable with. Say prepare for battle. Consecutive battle. And say continue. Consecutive battles when defeated. If a hero reaches a max level, you want it to end. So what does this mean? Even if you lose, you want to keep going, right? Because you just want a little AFK. So that's what this means. If you lose, I don't care. Just keep fighting. This means that, okay, do I want everybody to be max level and then end? Or do I just want one? Um, I usually like to click off this just because... That just kind of is a nice control for me, uh, especially when I have a lot of elixir saved up. So you click start, it's just going to run continuously, and you're going to be able to save up a lot of experience, a lot of gold, um, a lot of fodder. And that is pretty much all the tips I have for progression. Um, and so you don't have to be like me and kind of fumble around and be like, why am I so weak and I can't progress anymore? Other than that, you know, good luck on your pulls. Uh, hopefully we're going to get some good news coming forward and some communication from the developers. Uh, next on, I haven't really heard anything about them or from them. What I can say is do join the Discord. Uh, there is the current global Discord in the below links. And we are going to be merging or trying to merge with another server because me personally, I don't care about trying to monopolize a community. It's more important that we just have a good time. You know, the more people that are there, the more experience that is there, uh, the better it is for you guys. So let's get together. Let's talk. Let's chill. Let's BS. It doesn't matter. You know, uh, I'm really looking forward to that merger because I already get so much help from, you know, just guys that we play with. Now, if we play with people that have played on the Asia server for many years, you know, they may not have the same stats. They may not have the same units, but the progression is going to be the same. The fundamental uh, design of the game can't change because if you do, you, they're just making a, a new game. It's no longer overhit. So let's all get together and let's chill, man. All right. So that's it. And hopefully global will hit soon because the VPN system is killing me. My game crashes like no other and it is painful. Later, guys.